I've been creating videos online and professionally for well over a decade now, and I feel like I'm at least decent at shooting and editing them, but something I've always seemed to struggle with is getting my colors right in color correction and color grading. However, for those of you that have seen my content before, you'll know that I like my images to not look super clean. I want them to have imperfections and distortions and look a little bit grungy. Some would say that I like my colors to have the film look. However, before now, the majority of my videos had all been like color corrected and color graded manually, which I was never happy with because the colors just didn't look right or I couldn't get like the effects to look good. So that's why I'm excited today that we're going to be talking about some film emulation software by Dehancer. Before we get started though, Dehancer did send out the license for me to check out this product. However, they aren't paying me to make this video and they don't get to see it before I post it, so all the opinions in here are going to be my own. I'm sure the majority of you already know what Dehancer actually does, but for those of you that have never seen this software before, Dehancer is a film emulation plugin. It works on both Windows and Mac on all your favorite editing softwares, DaVinci, Adobe Suite, Final Cut. They even have an iOS app, which works with Capture One, Lightroom, and Affinity Photo. So basically what Dehancer actually does is take your standard footage like this, which looks fine, but it's a little bit too clean and sterile, and then converts it into something that's more like emulated film, meaning that it actually looks like either photography film or movie film and just adds effects and things onto it that makes it look a little bit more organic, natural, cinematic if you will, hate that word, but it converts it into something a little bit more stylized. And I can hear you all asking the question now, like, Andrew, I don't have like a high-end cinema camera, what would I do with software like this? Well, neither do I. I have two cameras which are both like five years old now majority of the footage you just saw was shot on this camera which is my sony a6600 and sometimes i'll shoot on this one which is my sony a7 III. Obviously, a Dehancer can be used with the high-end cinema cameras, and that's great. That footage is going to look fantastic, but they have a whole list of different cameras and different picture profiles and stuff that you can choose from, so it should work with any camera that you have. I understand that the majority of people that pick up Dehancer are probably going to get it for DaVinci Resolve. Obviously, it's the best color grading, color correction type software. However, personally, I'm going to be using it in the Adobe Suite, more specifically in Premiere Pro, because I want to know how it looks, how it performs in software like this, and just how quick it is to use because personally i make content which has a quick turnaround i'm either making youtube videos tiktok videos or sometimes i shoot weddings which obviously i want to finish as quick as possible and get it sent out to the couple without spending months color grading and getting all the colors and stuff just perfect so when you're in premiere pro and you've actually got footage that's ready to be color graded color corrected dehanced or whatever you want to call it the first thing that i like to do is to add an adjustment layer above it so that any effects or changes that we make goes on the adjustment layer and not on the actual raw footage that we have. And then we obviously want to find the Dehancer plugin, which if we go to our effects panel and then go to film emulation, you'll find Dehancer in here. I have two because I've got an old version in here, which I still haven't uninstalled, but obviously pick the latest version of Dehancer and get that onto your footage, which should make some initial changes, which I'm going to remove a couple of them. Otherwise it will slow my computer down. So the first thing I like to do is to remove the film grain because obviously film grain looks great and that does give the whole like film vibe but the film can be a little bit processor heavy on your computer sometimes so if you've got a lot of this or it's on a long take or whatever it can slow your computer down so i like to add the grain in towards the end so that it doesn't actually like slow editing and stuff down once we've done the grain though we're actually going to convert this image from its S-Log form into Rec 709 or something more usable. So in order to actually convert this, you're gonna go up to the input here and you've got a couple of different options. If you've shot this in a standard picture profile, then obviously leave this in Rec 709. Or if you're already converted it yourself using like Sony's conversion lots and stuff, you'd choose Rec 709. But me personally, I've done nothing to this so far. I shot this image on my Sony a7 III in S-Log2. It's an 8-bit camera, so I'm sticking with S-Log2 so things don't fall apart while I'm trying to edit it. So that means I want to go to the source here and then choose 
camera and then actually find the a7 III, which is obviously all the way down here somewhere. But obviously there's hundreds of cameras in here and you're sure you'll be able to find your camera in this input section from iPhones, Harry Lexus, Blackmagic, Fuji, Canon, I said that really weird, Panasonic, and obviously we've got the Sony cameras as well. After converting our image to Rec. 709, you think the next thing we're going to do is start stylizing this and adding effects and stuff, but there's something I like to do before, otherwise by the time you get to the end of this like dehancing stuff, it will look a bit different than how you've actually edited it. So obviously choose your input and then we're going to choose print instead, which is basically like the output colors of this, because obviously when you're actually working with the film, you'll shoot on a certain film stock, send it to the developers and stuff, and then they'll reprint it onto a different film or another film to send out to you and the cinemas and whatever. So if you choose linear, it doesn't really affect it. If you choose cine on like film log, that's if you design your own print yourself and then add it in a node later on, or you add it later on after Dehancer or whatever. Or you can choose the three different print stocks which Dehancer includes. And if you've got Fujifilm, which is this contrasty looking one here, the one that I like the most is this Kodak 2383 print film, which is, I believe, the one that lots of Hollywood films use. Apparently the Batman and stuff printed on this. They shot like on digital and then did all the editing and stuff and then printed it onto actual organic film so it had that grungier look. Obviously big Batman film so I, I like this look. Or you could choose the final one which is Kodak Endura glossy paper which has in my opinion a softer kind of look overall. This next section is the actual best bit about Dehan. So you've set up your input and your output colors and now you actually get to stylize your image in a way that you think suits the project that you're doing. So obviously your input and your print are set up but now I would open film, film developer film compression and expand and then obviously enable all of these and then these four kind of blocks of settings is what's going to change the actual overall look of your image and then anything beyond print like color head all this stuff down here is what actually stylizes it so the first thing we want to do is to choose an actual film stock for this and obviously there's going to be a whole bunch of them in dehancer there is a whole ton some of them photography some of them film and stuff but the favorite ones or at least my favorite ones are this kodak vision 3 250d which i think looks great nice and contrasty very filmic it's one of the ones that you use on like movies and stuff but also big fan of the cine stills down here i like cine still 50 this nice kind of low contrast one compared to the previous one and then finally i like as well if you can find it the portraits the kodak portrait 400 and 800 which are also kind of low contrast honestly straight out of the gate i think it looks pretty good anyway however there's another thing in film that you probably should change and that's either push pull which is basically kind of affects the contrast of your image so play around with that what you think looks best i'm gonna have this at just uh one and then from here just play around with all the different settings and stuff in here to get a look that you actually like because honestly these are super customizable and playing around with it's going to actually teach you what it does more than me trying to explain it for the next hour or something but i will say that one thing about this section here that i really like is film compression sometimes with digital like images you'll find that your highlights and stuff will clip really quickly whereas if you use film compression it creates a much nicer like roll off for those highlights because obviously if i turn it off right now you can see that the highlights and stuff in my face are kind of a little hotter and then this light behind me is obviously kind of blown out and stuff but if i enable it a bit and obviously the settings have changed a little bit it makes them drop down a little bit more so they don't seem as harsh and finally we've got the expand options which basically just changes the contrast of this image because you can change the black and white points and obviously bringing the white point down makes the image brighter and then you can actually bring the black point up and then that's going to make it more contrasty and stuff but normally i don't change this setting but obviously you can change it and play around with it and get a style that you like for the footage that you're shooting now that we've finished editing this image and we've got it looking the way that we want it to the next part was the fun part we get to stylize it and make it look and feel more like film so obviously we're back at print but now we're going to be on the other side of it starting with color head color head basically does what it says in the tin here it's changing the colors of your image so you can add more yellow more blue into it more green magenta red whatever like that just play around with it add some vibes change the color of it any way you want it to but obviously we're now back at film grain the film grain section of dehancer is possibly my favorite section of this like stylizing bit because we get to add in this like natural noise and grain and movement all over our 
image and obviously you can customize this and have it like very subtle with the 65 mil kind of grain and you can barely even see any of it even if you like zoom in 800 there's not that much grain but obviously you can make it really heavy and really stylized by going down to like 8 mil grain and it'll soften up your image and make it look like it's on a physical like thing it's almost like you can reach out and touch this and it just looks so good something i really like about this actual grain in dehancer though is the fact that it's not just like an effect that's put on top of your image obviously it's an effect but the way that it's made is with like an algorithm so it actually scans and like looks at your image and then builds the grain off of that it's not just overlaid on top as like a generic noise so it actually is part of the footage that you've shot and it's going to be customized specifically for the images that are in your projects once you've finished setting up your film grain and stuff the next things we're going to check out is something called halation and bloom and i'm mentioning them both together basically because in real life you'll normally get those two things going hand in hand so halation effectively is like a light leak and it also causes like a color outline around high contrast areas in your image so if you look at this image and then look at my lights behind me you can probably see there's a slight red outline behind these not behind but around these lights and that's halation being caused so if you turn halation on obviously you can change the strength of it here and then bloom effectively makes bright or highlights in your image bloom and leak out and spread around your image which i don't know how much you're going to be able to see here because i'm already using a diffusion filter which basically does the same thing as this but if i turn it on you can see it slightly affect it but obviously you can make it really strong and make it bloom the light even more then we've obviously got film damage and that's kind of just does exactly what it says in the tim it's basically scratches and cuts and hers and things that damage the film where now the film will look used and obviously you won't be able to see why it's not playing so if i just put it into like eight mil like this and then play it briefly you might be able to see these like scratches and stuff moving around the actual image which makes it look more organic and real and like actual tangible piece of film being played instead of it just being a digital image everything under film damage is stuff that i usually don't use in my kind of projects and stuff but film breath and gateway is kind of what causes that flickering that you get when you're actually projecting film back and then overscan actually adds in the oh, let me just turn it on you can kind of see it where it adds in these like edges so it actually looks like a piece of film vignette is probably something that you've heard of before but for those of you that don't know it's effectively just adding shadows or like dark areas around the edges of your image so if i turn that off you can see that it kind of gets brighter around the edges and when i turn it back on it's now darker and more focused on the center and that brings us to the monitor section of dehancer which is actually quite useful once you actually open monitor this isn't something that will affect how your actual like image looks but it's a great way to check exposure and stuff because you can turn on false color and this will let you know if anything's overexposed or underexposed so you can tell by these like color chart here and you match it up and see what the exposure is like or there's also clipping indication which you can turn on and it'll tell you if anything is under or overexposed as well by lighting up like shadows or highlights if it's too bright or too dark and that finally brings us on to output and LUT generation output is effectively the impact or the amount of everything that you've just done so it's 100 right now which is basically everything we've done but i can like turn this down and you'll get the original image now so that's what we started with and then that's what we've like ended up with instead and then LUT you can kind of export an actual LUT file which means that you can transfer it between different like projects easily or you can use it i the way that i use it is i export a lot and then i use it on my live stream so if you ever see a live stream of mine i'm usually using a lot from dehancer on my actual camera in my live streams so i can make it look a little bit more cinematic although i don't think it exports like film grain and stuff it exports all the other things <laughs> Obviously, Dehancer isn't a free software, but you can probably guess that from the amount of stuff that's actually in this software. However, it is a great way to speed up your workflow or add different looks and vibes to the projects that you're creating. But for those of you that want to check this out, there is a couple of weeks free trial on their website. And also, if you do want to buy this software, I have a slight discount code. If you enter OWL at checkout, you should save like 10% off, which obviously supports this channel and helps me continue making these types of videos. Obviously, this plugin isn't exactly 
exactly for everyone, but if you've made it this far in the video, I assume you're at least somewhat interested in Dehancer and the film look. And honestly, it's a great plugin. It's really simple and intuitive to use. It makes your footage look great. There's tons of customizability and options and stuff like that. The only real downsides are one, it's kind of expensive, so not everyone's going to be able to afford this, especially if you're like a part-time casual creator. It's a little bit heavy on like processing and stuff. So if you don't set it up right or if you do too many effects all at once too early, your PC and stuff may struggle a little bit. So hopefully you just do this towards the end of your editing and you'll be fine. And last but not least, they don't have every single camera profile yet. However, I will say this, that I've only had this plug-in for like a month or two and I get emails almost like weekly of them adding new stuff to this thing so I assume they are working on it I'm just going to keep improving it and adding more camera profiles and more like effects and stuff to this so I'm looking forward to seeing what actually happens with this in the future anyway hopefully this video was actually useful for you if you do have any questions or comments about Dehancer leave them down below I'll try and reply or make a follow-up video in the future about them smash that like button down below so the algorithm gods will favor me with some more views and finally check out one of these other videos I made about filmmaking and content creation and I'll see you all in the next one.